Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for following me along with uh, this journey of mine. Exploring this world of pens that I seem to be entrapped in. But it's a good thing. So one of the pens that I showed in my August pen. So we're just going to do a quick review. Take a look at it. Talk about what I like and I don't like. You know, why is this pen in my possession? Yeah, nice design box. A little bit of artwork to it, and we see the pen. And what attracted me to it was the finish. There's been some discussions about, do you just buy a pen because of how it looks? And I would say, sometimes, yes. This is a model I'm familiar with, the they like New Moon. It's been around for a while. We'll take a look at some earlier versions of it. And you need to realize it comes in two sizes. This is the larger of the two sizes. So that's just a nice resin. We'll catch a little bit of sunlight. And admire it. The cap comes off in... Whoa. <laughs> Over three turns. Uh, something's going on here. Uh, standard Delight number five nib. I get the bent nib. No metal ring at the bottom of the section, which is generally indicative of a higher end pen. Another metal ring between uh, section and barrel. Same material and section as in the barrel. A uh, faux end cap here. Certainly precludes any eyedroppering, but you know, it, it's a design element that matches what's at the top of the cap. And I'm pretty certain this is either uh, threaded in or we'll take a look inside to see if there's a screw holding it in. But that's how the clip is attached. It's just a cartridge converter and the barrel comes off relatively easily. We see that metal insert, which to me adds stability and is a a sign of a better made pen rather than this being all machined out of acrylic but I haven't had issues with any cracking of pens but then you know I've only had them for a few years this is the good moon man converter nice silicone insert there nice metal band so I see this as lasting a long time I'm not a fan of that spring that agitates the ink but I haven't decided yet whether to take it apart and take that spring out so let's take a quick look inside that cap and see how this pen is put together. Here we have some uh, diffused sunlight coming in. We'll bring the LED and play that on the resin. You know, one of the nice things about uh, a pen like this with a lot of complexity in the resin is under different lights it takes on a different view. As we look inside the cap, We'll see what looks like a glob of glue down there. Uh, might seal up the pen, but certainly uh, not a clean design. This resin is uh, very transparent in sections. Really stained glass is another term that might come to mind as my uh, LED strobes. But all in all, you know, it's definitely a visually interesting pen. Before we look at the other D-like New Moons, we'll take a look at that engraving or stamping that's on that cap band. The cap band extends all the way down, so it really will protect against uh, chipping or cracking in this nice looking acrylic. So here are my two other D-like New Moon pens. It's a blue, nice blue acrylic, kind of reminds you a little bit of Galaxy. And here's the smaller version. As you can see, it's a good uh, substantial difference between the two. The girth is about the same, and they all have the same type of nibs in. But let's uncap them and take a look at those nibs. These pens post fairly well. They're not real deep posters, but it's fairly secure. And the cap will stay on there through most general writing, but it will come off fairly easily. But here, the uh, smaller one has a glass nib. Why do I have that here? 
for testing inks. I've, I've tried 100% glass pens and I've broken every one I've ever had. Some of them lasted a month or two, but so I'm staying away from glass pens even though I think this nib is a great design for testing out inks. I have a lot of dip pens and I've experimented with them, but they've never quite provided me with the consistent writing that the glass pen does for ink testing. And these are similar resins between these two. I think there's normal variations in this blue resin. This is certainly a little darker, at least in the barrel. And the stained glass one is its own animal unto itself. Here's the auction I bought the stained glass one from. And I originally bought it on Etsy and I paid too much money for it. I didn't search around, but on eBay it's extremely, uh, it's less expensive. And here's the eBay auction. So anytime you see any of these Chinese pens that I talk about in my videos, I please encourage you to search all the different selling and buying options that are available to you in whatever location you're at. Um, the prices can vary quite a bit, and the pens, I think, are generally the same. I know some viewers have talked about, you know, not getting um, silicone grease or not getting a box or these types of things, but um, I haven't had any real issues with any of the pens that I bought from China, and I have uh, many, many hundreds. So the converter came apart very easily. This uh, metal collar unscrews from this uh, plastic barrel piece. I silicone grease the piston, I silicone grease the threads on there, and yes, I've removed quite a lot of these springs. To me, they don't really agitate the ink. They're very lightweight, so they tend to get stuck at the top where the ink will get stuck. And when you want to change inks, it really takes a lot of flushing to get all the ink out of that spring. It retains ink quite a bit, so I remove them. The Delike uh, nib assembly comes right out, it unscrews. I'm not worried about pulling the nib out, I'm just going to flush this and clean this. You might remember when we looked at the full of wind, it had a metal collar here that had threads to attach to the nib collar. And this has the same thing, but it also has a metal one at the bottom. And these are all glued in place, and in between them is just the uh, resin. So it's, it's a better design, I think, than the full of wind is done, but it's just different. Each of them has some advantages, but this one has more. I have the macro lens on, just to show how that nib has that slight upturn to it. Just a standard feed, and that ink certainly does ink creep. One of the reviewers talked about that. And it certainly is a dense color, but... If you want that permanence, you're going to get it with a cost. Here we have a little more magnification. I'm experimenting with different things just to see what works. So you can get an idea of that nib. So what ink to put in the D-like New Moon pen. I'm into trying some inks that I haven't used before. So this is one of them. And yes, it's a one ounce bottle, which is one third the size of the three ounce bottles. As usual, a very interesting hand drawn label. And it's guillotine proof. Not something I ever worried about in an ink. If we look at the color card, we'll notice it's a dark purple. And it certainly is purple. Put it down really thick. I don't see any sheen or anything there. You can see from the schmear how it is. The chromatography, I think, shows one of the properties of the ink. It's very thick, saturated, and not much else there except purple. But is it really permanent? It is incredibly permanent. This I let it dry for a day, and I did the same uh, test and the water didn't move it at all. The water got all the way up here to the dried piece, and as you can see, it didn't move anything. So, you want a permanent purple? This is certainly fits that bill. Uh, here's, I, I put a link to the review there. I'm certain it's hard to clean out. All these like super saturated, probably pigmented inks, most of the permanent inks are pigmented, 
are going to be a problem to clean out, but then I don't expect to clean his pen out very often, but let's see how the pen handles this unique and interesting ink. So I've used this pen for a few days and written with it on a couple different papers and I'm enjoying the pen on many levels. Not enjoying how many rotations it takes to take off the cap. It's just way too many. But this color always brings a smile to my face. This finish, that cracked ice mosaic, stained glass look. And it's a pen that feels fine in the hand posted. And it is a little short unposted, but not unusable. Yeah, I have medium hands. Yeah, some people think it's too small, but I think it's okay. And that section also feels good. We'll give you the dimensions of the section. We'll also give you the weight of the pen. It's not real heavy, but it feels good. It feels substantial. Those threads don't bother you. I like that little metal ring at the bottom. So as a writer pen, it's, it's good. Let's see how that nib puts down that interesting ink. Well, after I did the close-up with the microphone on the nib, I started the rest of the video and I didn't turn on the camera. So we're going to go through a little bit of it and then finish up with some live writing. The nib is medium wet. This is a very thick ink. So that's pretty much what you're going to get out of it. And this nib, I think, lays down a very excellent line. It's very smooth. It glides across the paper. Reverse writing is not something you're going to do with this, at least not with this ink. Maybe if I worked on the nib, I could get reverse writing to work a little bit better. A lot of these bent nibs you can reverse write pretty well, but this one's not one of them. So we're going to rate the pen. I give it a 9.0, and I give it a, a number of different checks. I give it two checks for the nib because the nib is, is really, really good. And if you don't have experience with these extra fine bent nibs from uh, Delike, then give them a try. I've had a number of different pens and I've enjoyed them in every one. And two checks for the look. How could you not give it a couple checks for looks? It doesn't rank any higher because of the three turns for the cap and the glue they have in there, but you know, as a pen, it deserves your attention. And at the price point, it's a very good buy. We're back to live writing. So we've reached a conclusion of this review. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you can find a pen that you enjoy putting ink on paper with and putting your thoughts down on paper. I think it's an excellent exercise, uh, both mentally and physically. You know, fine motor control is definitely uh, something that you'll learn uh, as you write something I'm still learning. So write a letter to somebody. There's websites where you can go find people that want to be pen pals and just so you could write to a stranger or you could write to someone in your family. There's a lot of opportunities there. So take advantage of them. Yeah, you know, do something different. Uh, I'm certain in today's times there's a lot of different things that you're doing so you might as well just add to the list. We've reached the end of this video. Hope you're staying safe and healthy and happy. Because that's the important things nowadays. We're going to say bye until the next video. And this nib writes very, very well. And I like the combo with this ink. It's a keeper and an everyday carry. <laughs>